Brent Zafford. News 6 at 9. Here's your 58. Good morning on this Thursday. Here are your big stories on News 6 at 9 in less than a minute. A bill aimed at cracking down on distracted driving has stalled in the legislature again. What's next and why one local woman is praising our push? Investigators say it starts with a swipe your personal info transmitted and copied only on 6. The undercover investigation with detectives. What we discovered gas station skimmers are really doing with your information and money. Then your headphones sounding muffled? It could be because they're getting pretty gross. How to clean them to keep the sound good and your ears healthy. Plus backpacking plus a bicycle equals bike packing. Yeah, guides say there's no better place to do it than right here in Florida. Why they say it's a serene journey. You just have to give it a try. And a brand new deputy is in the house, this handsome little canine. He's getting his name today. More importantly, we'll meet him and chat with Flagler County Sheriff Rick Staley coming up this hour. Those are our big stories. News 6 at 9 starts in three minutes. Stay with us. Live from News 6 and ClickOrlando.com, this is News 6 at 9. Good morning, everyone. I'm Candace Campos. I'm glad you're with us. I'm Bridget Ellison. And I'm Julie Broughton. Hope you're having a nice Thursday so far. Of course, it's Thursday, so that means we're all starting to Almost think there. ahead to Almost the there. weekend. We're getting so close to it. Our friend Cole Lee Smith from the Creative City Project is here. And if you're looking for things to do this weekend, so many things going on in the art scene all across Central Florida. One event he'll be talking about at the Orlando Rep that if you have little ones, I'm very excited about. So we may be checking out. So if you're making your weekend plans, stick around. We've got yeah. some suggestions. So much to do, so little time. Yes. That's always the case. And you know, maybe you're an entrepreneur, maybe you're thinking about starting a business, or maybe, you know, the cost of an office space is just getting too expensive and you're looking for some different ideas. So today we're talking about co-working or shared office space and how this has blown up all across Central Florida and there are so many options for you to make your dreams come true, whether you have a small business or you're just starting out. So we'll look at some of the details on some new places coming up a little bit later. And speaking of starting up, uh, <laughs> Uh, Flagler Sheriff's Office has a new puppy in town. All right, he is a the cutest little bloodhound mm -hmm. I've ever seen. Might oh, be the yeah. cutest puppy I've ever seen. I've seen a lot of really cute puppies. Um, they are here because they are trying to find a name for this cutie patootie. I have a couple. I know we all have a couple suggestions mm -hmm. that we'd like to add uh, to the pool. But of course, uh, he'll be joining us with, of course, the humans, which we're not as excited to see when they came through the door. But we are going to be talking to all of them about this new little puppy, the new addition. He's so cute. Yeah. Already, he was sniffing through the hallway. I so know. He's already working know. on We're his so job. We're so excited. Yes. <laughs> but first, though, a bill to crack down on distractive driving hits a speed bump in the state capitol. So after the House passed its version of a stricter texting and driving bill Tuesday, the companion bill stalled in the Senate yesterday. The proposed legislation would let police pull you over if you're texting behind the wheel. Advocates are hoping it makes its final hurdle in the Senate. Eventually, lawmakers will need to combine them into one piece of legislation. And many Floridians have been closely watching these bills since the start of the, of the legislative session, including a former teacher. Now, we first told you about Jill Fritch the story last year. Two crashes in 2017 left her seriously hurt, and both were caused by distractive drivers. Fritch reached out to News 6 after seeing a News 6's Matt Austin's push at our state capitol to change that law. I was clapping so hard and cheering so hard into the television, thinking finally, finally are we are making progress. Finally, somebody's listening to us and hearing this. So I'm, I'm encouraged, very encouraged. Uh, now the Senate will meet again today at 10 this morning. We just got word though from Matt Austin, who's at the Capitol, that the proposed bill has been changed by Senator Simpson from hands-free everywhere to hands-free in school and construction zones. Now the bill is expected to get a third reading today at some point in the morning session. Again, things continue to update by the mm -hmm. minute when it comes to this. Again, the session starts at 10 o'clock. Matt Austin is there and yeah. he'll be giving us the very latest. And possibly the holdup mm -hmm. with this is because they have two very different views mm -hmm. on this bill between the House and the Senate. So 
hopefully they can get on the same page and, and yeah. make something happen before everything comes to a close next week. Yeah, we were expecting a vote yesterday, and then, right. of course, it got put off. They didn't give any official reason for that, but as Bridget said, the two pieces of legislation very different, so it may have something to do with that. And session is set to mm -hmm. end May 3rd, which is Friday, mm -hmm. yeah. so time's ticking. we got to get this going. Yeah, yeah. And, you, and of course, you can still get results um, by making sure your voice is heard. We have on clickorlando.com slash driving change a way of um, uh, getting a hold of um, certain sen state senators and things like that to make sure that, uh, um, like like um, the lady we were just talking to, you can get, get really results there. Yeah. Well, Joe Biden is running for president. He released his campaign video earlier this morning. The former vice president framing his 2020 race as, quote, a battle for the soul of this nation. Folks, America is an idea, an idea that's stronger than any army, bigger than any ocean, more powerful than any dictator or tyrant. It gives hope to the most desperate people on earth. It guarantees that everyone is treated with dignity and gives hate no safe harbor. Biden, 76, enters a crowded field of 20 candidates all vying for the Democratic nomination. He'll be kicking off the campaign at a fundraiser in Philadelphia tonight. Well, now let's get a look at those roads. Traffic safety expert Trooper Steve has your pinpoint traffic brought to you by Napleton Automotive. We had a busy morning. We did have a busy morning. My mind's kind of blown right now as a traffic guy, as a person who's done exactly this right now, to have some representative say only construction zones and only schools. It's crazy. Contact your local representative. Head over to clickorlando.com, like Candace said, and let your voice be heard. We need to make Florida a hands-free state. This crash right here, southbound 417, right at Aloma, off on the shoulder there. You can see Road Ranger and Troopers there, making sure that we get this cleared as quick as possible. Some slight delays, but once you cruise right past this, the rest of 417 looking really good. I-4, westbound 434. I've checked every DOT camera. This crash isn't there. You are smooth sailing all the way to the downtown town Orlando area. Drive times right now from Osceola Parkway to Colonial, 28 minutes, only 22 minutes if you're coming from Lake Mary. Very rare sight there. And this crash still lingering down in Osceola County. Be careful, please. This is just north of Horizon Middle School at OBT and Ham Brown Road. Ladies, back to you. All right, Steve, thank you. Only on six, an alarming eye-opening look at credit card skimmers. Yes, they're now harder to detect and showing up almost every day all across Brevard County. The worst part, there's no way to know if the pump you're using has been compromised. So a team of deputies is checking them and busting them almost every day. News 6's Eric Von Aiken got an inside look at how the special unit is getting crime results. This time, Agent Justin Wood and his tech expert teammate do not find a skimmer, but this isn't the norm because good. usually they do. We go out probably uh, two to three times a week, and I'd venture to say we probably find two or three uh, at least a week. All day, all over Brevard County, skimmers are collecting your credit card information. Every time you swipe, and you have no way of knowing because skimmers are now so small and so sophisticated, they're slyly installed inside a pump in seconds. This is inside, and this can't be seen. There's no way to detect this from the outside, though. Unfortunately, no. It's nothing you'd be able to see, touch, feel, or look at. Each skimmer that Agent Wood finds spawns an intensive investigation for his economic crimes unit here at the Brevard County Sheriff's Office. First, they download the data on the skimmer's tiny computer chip and contact the banks and credit card companies to find out where the stolen numbers are being used. And then I obtained video which shows this vehicle using a card that came off of that skimmer and they purchased diesel fuel. Agent Wood and the team discovered the skimming is only the first phase of a much larger gas stealing organized operation. Here's how it works. Someone steals your account info. Someone else makes a new card with it and turns gift cards into working stolen credit cards to buy diesel fuel to sell on the black market. You can see it looks like it's a, it's a stack of wood. Thieves use cleverly disguised bladder trucks like this fake facade of plywood that was hiding a 700-gallon tank. Within the past few years, we've actually arrested um, and made great cases on 14 different uh, fuel bladder vehicles. 14. 14 that were using the stolen credit card information from skimming devices, using that to purchase diesel fuel. The Burrard County Sheriff's Office says they have made more arrests of people doing the skimming than any other agency in Central Florida. But it's not just them. The Department of Agriculture is in charge of checking skimmers all over the state. They say they inspect every year almost half a million gas pumps. Since 2015, they say 
they found 2,200 skimmers statewide in Brevard County. Eric Von Eck and Getting Crime Results, News 6. Those skimmers have gotten me before. Uh, I don't know. And if you can't see the skimmers, there are ways to protect yourself. Yeah, first, always use a credit card, not your debit card. You can also pay with cash or... If you can't, go inside to pay, you know, just taking a few extra steps. Mm -hmm. and you have to start yeah. thinking this must be an inside job in some cases, getting inside those pumps. Yeah, it is frightening. So good that they are working on that. Yeah, and it's interesting because once when, one time my card was, was skimmed, the next charge was like, you know, $500. I was like, who's filling up a car for $500? It might have been one of those, you know, mm -hmm. hidden mm -hmm. compartments where they fill up all that gas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Well, offices are the most common workplace that are fit for usually any type of business. And in today's fast-paced working world, a growing alternative to a traditional office space is a co-working space. Up next, we'll talk to co-owners of VentureX Orlando and see why the co-working concept gets results. You're watching News 6 Getting Results. We'll be right back. This portion of the news is brought to you by the Orlando Solar Bear. Tonight, live Getting Results with Bridget Ellison. Julie Broughton, meteorologist Candace Campos, and traffic safety expert Trooper Steve. This is News 6 at 9. These days, many Americans are ditching their cubicles and becoming their own boss. And working from home doesn't always have the proper amenities, so many entrepreneurs are seeking out communal workspaces known as co-working spaces. And there's now a new co-working space in downtown Orlando here now to talk to us about the growing trend of co-working. Burke and Lindsay Hedrick, co-owners of Venture X of Orlando, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for Thank having you us. Very much. So you're excited to join this growing trend of co-working. Tell us Absolutely. more about why this is a great fit for so many types of businesses. The beauty of co-working is really that it just offers the flexibility. I mean, if, if companies don't want to sign a three to five year lease, they come to a co-working space, we're month to month, but we, pre we provide all the amenities. So we provide the, the really fast business Wi-Fi for them, unlimited coffee, tea, conference room usage. So we provide that service of reception service, concierge service. Um, so we have a whole in-house building for them to use, but they're only um, you know, paying once a month a membership. So it makes it very convenient for everyone. And this really does seem like a trend, especially, you know, we hear about the gig economy people, mm -hmm. you know, not working for a company full time. But so many people I know when I used to freelance and I would do work at home, I just couldn't get anything done at yeah. home. Are you hearing from people that maybe it's easier to work in a space that's more dedicated to a work type situation? You're exactly right. Co-working's involved over the last 10 to 15 years. Big companies used to say 10 years ago, well, go work from home. It's cheaper. It's not on your bill. Go work from home and you can do that. People found out they were doing laundry, they were walking the dog, <laughs> yeah. they were doing everything but working at home. Mm -hmm. Lately, the trend, the last three to five years, people said, come back, but don't you know, have to work in a traditional office space. Come work in a flexible office space where you can go out, get your popcorn, get coffee, get tea, but come back to a space that's a private office where you can have private conversations with walls and doors. I mean, I feel like it's easier to kind of compartmentalize work versus home when you mm -hmm. kind of have that separation. Mm -hmm. exactly. uh, how has technology, you feel, impacted the kind of this co-working space? Technology has allowed us to provide high-end services. It's a highly amenitized area. Uh, why apartments are doing so well is because people want the amenities. They don't want to have the maintenance of working on a home. It's just like office. People want to come to a space and they can come work and, and have all the amenities that you'd have at a very high-end space without having to build out the office. You have all the furniture there. You bring your monitor and your laptop and you're up and working in a few minutes. Um, out yeah. of space. And we take care of the Wi-Fi, the utilities, the cleaning service, so everything that you would need for a traditional office space, we handle for them. So they, it's, it's plug and play practically, move right. themselves what in are, and work. What are some of the variety of businesses you're seeing mm -hmm. coming in? We're seeing uh, um, attorneys, a lot of attorneys, we have mortgage companies, we have property management, we have software companies, digital marketing companies, um, engineers, there's there's a whole gamut of, of companies which is really neat and a lot of startups so we're excited to see, we're working with the startups, they're starting at a lower membership but we're excited to see them grow and there have been some already in our space that have grown into a larger office and, and hired so it's been it's been exciting to see that. And what are you hearing from the people who use these spaces as to how it makes their life easier? Because I imagine mm -hmm. that that just, you show up with your laptop like you said and Ugh. you're ready to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People love it. Yeah. People love it. They, they can come in and get a one person, a two person, and then a month they can go to a four person. In a month they can be in a six person. In a month they can be in a ten person. It allows you to scale. It's flexible. And uh, it allows you to grow with the business. You don't have to take the overhead of signing a three to five year lease. 
and not having or having space that you're not using and then having space that you need more of that you have to go out and build a whole other mm -hmm. space. So that flexibility really allows people to thrive in businesses, the bottom line, to really be profits driven uh, rather than having a lot of it as overhead. Mm -hmm. And I mean, have you seen this co-working space really kind of impact some, some of the other bigger cities? I mean, what, where are, what other cities are, look like they're kind of like the hot spots for them? Very much so. I mean, you look at New York, you look at California, you look mm -hmm. at Texas, they've been the poster childs for co-working space. Mm -hmm. IBM moved 500 employees out of their New York office into co-working. So you're oh, seeing wow. major companies move into co-working, not just small mom and pop shops um, that are doing this. So you're seeing major, uh, Fortune 500 companies move into co-working because of how flexible it is, because how much people love it, because of the amenities it provides. Wow. Well, Burke and Lizzie from yes. VentureX, thank you so much yes. for coming. Thank you for, for having, having us. us. Yes, Appreciate we'll put it. all this information on yes. clickorlando.com for people Absolutely. who are interested in learning more. Yes. Great, wonderful. We thank certainly so have much. a lot of startups around here. In yes, yes Florida, we right? do. We're here to help. <laughs> yes. Well, temperatures are expected to warm up again, but because it's April 25th, oh, yes. you should stay, still wear a light jacket. <laughs> Does anybody know where this is coming from? Um, we'll yes. explain here. This is our meme of the day. <laughs> Describe your perfect date. And then she answers, well, that's a tough one. I'd have to say April 25th, because <laughs> it's not too cold or not too hot. All you need is a light jacket. I know, it's Miss Congeniality, one of my all-time favorite movies. And, you know, April 25th, it's not, no jackets today. Let's yeah. just say that. It's going to be hot. <laughs> love that movie. Love pageants. Love April 25th. And here is a beautiful <laughs> picture of the reflection of sunrise in Sanford. This is from our photojournalist, Goose Gosselin. Oh, that is a I gorgeous there. shot, Goose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's one of those that you can stare at a wall and you're like, mm -hmm. what do you see in this picture? You know, look at those museums. All right, let's talk about your weather forecast for today. Again, no light jacket. That was just for the museum of the day. It is going to be toasty. Temperatures will be nearing 90 degrees today. When you factor in the heat and humidity, we'll be feeling more like the triple digits in some spots. we got the AC kicking over here. 71 degrees right now in Orlando. Same in Sanford. We're at 70 in Leesburg, already in the mid-70s along the coastline. For today's take here hour by hour, tons of sunshine. Rain is still out of the picture, but that won't last long. We're talking about a better chance of rain as our next front. A spring front makes its way through. Won't be as strong to severe as it was last Friday. Remember all those warnings that were being issued? Uh -huh. Some storm damage. Not the case this Friday, although we will see a good chance of some showers. Then look at Saturday and Sunday. Great looking weather forecast, albeit it will be warm. Mid 80s on Saturday. That's that quote cool front that comes through. And then we're right back to near 90 degrees Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It looks like we can say officially goodbye to the sweater weather, at least for now. Oh, so no more sweater dresses and boots. Yeah, I mean, you could, I mean, in I mean, the you studio. Could. Right. It's always winter in the studio. <laughs> it true. could snow here at any time. Yeah. <laughs> Whether you take your music on the go or you work on a computer, chances are you use headphones. Yeah, but they get a lot of use. So when was the last time you cleaned those, mm. those buds? Still mm. to come on the news at 9, Consumer Reports shows us how to get the gross out and keep yes. those headphones performing better. Oof. Oof. Okay, we're just hours away from the official release of the final Avengers movie. Avengers like Endgame, I know, is all fans have been talking about, and the numbers certainly show it. ClickOrlando.com's Brianna Voles is here with how fans are preparing for the movie and a little bit of hope for those still trying to get <laughs> yeah, tickets. Just good a luck. little bit, yeah. The Avengers will assemble one last time as they hit the big screen today in Marvel's grand conclusion to 22 films. So this time, they're trying to undo the devastating effects of Thanos's actions in Avengers Infinity War, which left the universe in ruins. And you already know fans are excited for this, but you may not have known that they were this excited. If you scroll down, you'll see the movie had its LA premiere Monday night, and by yesterday afternoon, Fandango was reporting more than 4,000 showtimes already sold out across the country. Fandango says Endgame is leading in pre-sales for the week, earning a rare and perfect score on its Fanticipation Movie Buzz Index. That means a lot of people are excited expected to hit theaters this weekend just to see it. But that's not all fans are doing. Down here, we've got a breakdown of some numbers, and one survey shows that more than 1,000 fans are taking this so seriously that 57% of them have unplugged from social media for now in an attempt to avoid any spoilers. Who knew this was all it took to get people to unplug? The good news with all this hype, Fandango says new screens and show times have been added just to meet the demand, so you may have a better chance at scoring some tickets. To help you out, if you 
you scroll down, you'll see that we put together a list of these websites where you can search for any remaining tickets at a theater near you. So head to clickorlando.com to find those links and then check back later for a breakdown of the best times to use the restroom. The movie is almost four hours, so trust me, you're going to need that intel, guys. Four <laughs> hours? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Is like there an intermission? Don't get the big icy. No. Yeah. Get the <laughs> kid. Get the kid get size. The kid yeah. size. Well, headphones oh. can be magnets for everything from lint to dust to earwax. That's just gross. Yeah. But it could be the reason why your headphones sound slightly muffled. The team at Consumer Report shows us the right way to clean them, which can lead to a simple fix. Everyone is wearing headphones, but how many people are cleaning them? Consumer Reports says 10 minutes and some common household supplies are all you need. If your headphones have removable tips, you want to take them off and clean them separately. Here's where that toothpick comes in handy. You just want to take that, kind of gently rub it through here, and just pull all that gunk out. You don't want to be sticking toothpicks inside the inner workings of your headphones. It's pretty delicate in there and it can be easy to damage. So if your headphones have a, a mesh screen covering the drivers, that can be a hot spot for wax. And you can just use the toothbrush to clean that off, kind of brush it gently across. You don't want wax getting pushed further into the screen there. Apple recommends uh, using a dry cotton swab to clean their mesh screens. Again, just be really gentle with it. Uh, for larger over-ear headphones, if the ear pads are removable, you want to go ahead and take those off, and you can clean these separately. For these screens, you want to use your toothbrush again and just brush gently across. Don't push in because the drivers here can be delicate and you don't want to damage those. For the outside, a few drops of mild dish soap and warm water is all you need. Just be sure to wring the towel out well. Water and electronics don't mix. So take your cloth, rub it along the outside here, get everything nice and clean. Uh, and uh, take your second microfiber towel and wipe it off as soon as you're done. It's better not to let them air dry. Cleaning your headphones every once in a while will keep them sounding great and help them last longer. Consumer Reports also says skip the alcohol. While it's fine to use on plastic and rubber, alcohol can dissolve foam, so stick to mild soap, water, and unscented baby wipes. And I think we already knew that baby wipes just work for everything. everything. They yes. do. Yeah, I have them everywhere. And just, I have no baby. So. There you go. See? Yeah. I mean, let's just make just like a disclaimer. Don't yeah. use a toothbrush you normally use. It's well, a different please toothbrush. Don't. Yeah, if you have to tell them that, then people have bigger problems, right? That's true. <laughs> For the first time in decades, a certain face is joining the force at the Flagler County Sheriff's Office. Such a sweet face, too, and he has a really big job to do. Like as big as his ears, right? Yeah. And the Sheriff's Office oh. is accepting name submissions for their new little bloodhound. And they're here with us today, live in studio, and I get to hang out with them. That's coming up next. <laughs> Live, getting results. This is News 6 at 9. Our first bloodhound in decades has joined the Flagler County Sheriff's Office. And he's ready to go to work, but he needs a name. Oh my goodness, I got chills just <laughs> watching that. He's so sweet. This little guy will have a big responsibility someday at the Flagler County Sheriff's Office once he is fully trained and he's already working hard on that. But you heard Sheriff Rick Staley say the pup needs a name. So, you know, just like when you're naming your kids, Candace, mm -hmm. you want to see their face first, right? right? So a meeting is necessary to get this name. It's okay. That's right, and that's why we invited Sheriff Rick Staley, K-9 Corporal Fred Gimbel, and the newest crime fighter to our studio today. He just wants to go start, like, mm -hmm. hounding already, right? He does. Well, hello, non-named pup. How are you? How are you two doing? How has this Good. excitement been kind of building with, with this new puppy? Well, you know, he's been kind of a rock star. Uh, <laughs> our, that video that you showed has 46,000 views. Oh, wow. We've had uh, 2,000 uh, submissions of names, some duplicates, all, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to be a hard choice. Now, this is the first bloodhound for the department in decades. So how long has it been, uh, how long has that gap been? I think it's been close to 30, maybe 35 years. Oh, wow. Uh, when, when the last time they had bloodhounds, originally they were purchased in law enforcement for escaped inmates, stuff like that. And, uh, and that's why the sheriff's office had it originally. And then they kind of went away into shepherds. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So, I mean, what kind of uh, responsibilities will he kind of grow into? Go ahead. Good boy. He's going to be, uh, help us look for missing endangered people. Mm -hmm. 
and missing juveniles and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Okay. And, I mean, you guys had the help of Putnam last year. It was, like, I believe, last October. I can, can, can kind of give us a story about how you guys worked with Putnam, and was that kind of a... That was the impetus to us yeah. getting our own because we had to borrow bloodhounds from either Putnam County Sheriff's Office, St. Mm -hmm. John's County Sheriff's Office, or Tomoka State Prison. And uh, Ricky uh, Wheeler, which was the missing endangered uh, child mm -hmm. that uh, we searched for for five days, when we finally found his clothes, Putnam, the canine out of Putnam County Sheriff's Office, led us right to uh, Ricky, brought him back, reunited him with his family. And it was at that point I said, okay, that's it. We need our own uh, bloodhound. That's right. So, I mean, we have different types of canines. We have German Shepherds. We have all of them who work in the forest. What do bloodhounds specifically do for you guys? Bloodhounds are just, they're not an apprehension dog. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're going to help us be able to find for those missing people without the chance or opportunity for them to engage in or anything like that. And their noses are supposed to be that much stronger. They're, they're specifically bred for tracking. It was funny because when we had Putnam here, I mean, his nose was on the ground. He was just, he didn't want to play. He just wanted to work. And I'm already seeing it in, in this little guy, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's he's already kind of mm -hmm. sniffing around. I mean, I, I, you were also saying that you were already kind of seeing his ability to, to kind of train. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we've, we've already started our training with him. Mm -hmm. um, we, we do what we call puppy tracks. or like short little mm -hmm. burst tracks. And like Hi. you said, when we came into the studio just now, mm -hmm. He was tracking everybody that was coming in right before us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't leave your shoes around, good girl. All right. Well, K9, K9 Corporal, uh, kind of what, what are you most excited about, I would say, working with this little guy, this non-named little guy? <laughs> Just the opportunity to use this new asset that mm -hmm. we're very fortunate to be able to acquire. Mm -hmm. um, it's a whole new aspect of the canine unit. Right. So being able to front run it for now is very exciting. All right, so we have a big competition going on, uh, kind of a naming competition that ends oh, today. Oh, we have that link on clickorlando.com as well as your Facebook page. Right. So, I mean, what are kind of the, the names that have been kind of leading the pack here? Well, we've seen a lot of names. There's mm -hmm. actually a lot coming in from um, the Game of Thrones oh, yes. uh, coming in. Yes. And then uh, the, there was a donor that actually donated the funds Ooh. to uh, purchase him. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Paso or Paco has been oh. a lot coming in uh, after the donor. He, he looks like a Dumbo to me, <laughs> but that's that maybe the ears, right? I mean, Dumbo's coming back, right? We had Olaf here a couple days ago, too, from uh, Marion County. So, again, so you still have till tonight to be able to... To Correct. vote for a name. And we'll pick a name and uh, announce it tomorrow. So oh. we still have time to submit. All right. And you can tell he's ready to go to work. He doesn't <laughs> like being held. <laughs> nope. He's like, let me get going. All right. Well, thank you so much for All joining right, us. You. And I'm going to just call you Dumbo for now. It was nice meeting you, Dumbo. All right. Julie, Rich, do you guys have any uh, good names you can think of? Oh, names are hard. Let, what about Bo? Ooh, Bo, like that's Bo. a good one. I just want to take him home and rock him to sleep. That's what I want to do. <laughs> Can she do that? Whatever yeah. his name is. It looks like Corporal yeah. Gimbel's he doing that right like now. Yeah. <laughs> he wants a nap now. Yes, he I does. Know, baby. Lots of excitement today. Well, Beyonce's known for having a passionate fan base, and now two Orlando fans are going viral for their internet dance challenge. The Before I Let Go Challenge showcases people dancing to a new song from Beyonce's latest album, Homecoming. Fabron Alexis and Fred Barthel's videos have been seen thousands of times. This week, Queen Bee herself shared it on her Instagram story, sharing videos of people participating in the dance challenge, spotlighting these Orlando dancers first. It's such a cool story. Yes, it is. And, uh, you know, Amanda Castro got to try out mm -hmm. her moves with them, and she's, that she's a good was, dancer. That was impressive. Yeah. I did not see that coming. If you haven't seen her story, you need to go to clickorlando.com and watch it. It's yeah, really I mean, good. not only is she a good dancer, which we all expect, but she's also seven months pregnant. Yeah. It's breaking it down. Yeah, superhero here. Yeah. Well, we've heard backpacking. <laughs> People often do it across Europe, even right here in the U.S. But locally, it's also evolved into a little sport called Bike packing. Yep, you guessed it. It's done with a bicycle. So what you may not know is that there are specific routes all over Florida's forest and wilderness backpackers use. So News 6 at 9's Carolina Cardona met with a local man who spent more than a decade just developing them because he says he wants people to really experience the personal journey that comes along with these amazing tours. Some people consider me the father of Florida bikepacking. That's probably because Carlos Rodriguez has traveled thousands of miles on his mountain bike. After working many years as a corporate trainer, he discovered bikepacking is his true passion. It was all an unexpected side effect, and it's been 
for me at least, uh, truly a wonderful experience. It all started when he wanted to challenge himself to something different. I wanted to uh, prepare to ride the Great Divide mountain bike route. That's one of the most recognized and significant off-pavement cycling routes in the U.S., starting in Canada and ending at the U.S.-Mexico border in New Mexico. When all you have to do is eat, sleep and ride, you reach a very natural state, a nomadic state, sort of like what I imagine maybe cowboys on the plains felt like when they were just riding their horse from town to town. A fruitful experience for Carlos. Conquering uh, challenges and overcoming uh, your fears and uh, challenging your comfort zones, all of those things, uh, philosophically speaking, do a lot for your psyche. Eventually, he created Single Track Samurai. And I uh, developed a coast-to-coast -coast route and then I developed uh, the most popular route of all, which is the Huracan 300 route. And then I wanted to go all the way north, so I developed what I called the Florida Divide route. Almost anyone in the state of Florida can just jump on the route and ride all the way to Alabama or ride all the way to Georgia on a mostly off-road route. Most people, when they think of Florida, they think beaches and Disney World, but what they don't realize is that ecologically it's the only state that you could see coyotes and panthers and bears and snakes uh, and lizards. You don't have that anywhere else in the United States. But it's not just about the scenery. Over the past 11 years, I've mapped over 2,000 miles of off-road routes. It's also about the people. At times, he's had groups of more than 100 people join in. One of the best parts about this is the people. The, the people you meet. Although a competition, Carlos says it's not about who makes it to the finish line first. I kind of reward people more for stopping to smell the roses than I reward them for uh, riding the fastest. But the focus of the events are about personal journey and challenge. It just gives you a different outlook on life. It increases your appreciation without sounding too romantic about it all. It gives you an opportunity to see the world in a very different way. The next event Carlos is getting ready for is the Spring to Spring Tour, which will take place at the Ocala National Forest. It's a three-day tour starting on May 10th, ending on the 12th. In Seminole County, I'm Carolina Cardona, News 6 at 9. That's very cool. I know my husband did a little part of it. He was like, yeah. come along with me. I'm like, no way. Yeah, and oh, while you're out there, so cool. you take along everything you need from your shelter to mm -hmm. cooking supplies. So it really is like hiking, except for you're on a bike. I mean, it, you know, if you want to get active, there are just so many options out yes, there. Yes, there are. Something for everyone. And you said during that during that story, you're like, well, if you see a panther, that's just going to make you pedal faster. Pedal faster, faster right? Exactly. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, we love the theme parks and the beach days here in Central Florida, but there's also a very thriving art scene. We always enjoy hearing about the new and annual art and entertainment festivals. So much to do, so little time. Ooh. Still ahead on the news at nine, Cole Neesmith from the Creative City Project joins us to talk about what's coming up in April Arts. You're watching News 6, getting results for all of Central Florida on the News 6 mobile app. We'll be right back. This portion of the news is brought to you by Bush Gardens Food and Wine Festival. Affiliated with Orlando Health. Live, getting results with Bridget Ellison, Julie Broughton, meteorologist Candace Campos, and traffic safety expert Trooper Steve. This is News 6 at 9. From downtown Orlando to the Space Coast, there is so much to check out when it comes to the performing arts. And sometimes you don't even have to make weekend plans. There's plenty <laughs> to see and do during the week. And there's plenty of outdoor festivals, which is, you know, a great pair with the warm weather we're expecting. So here now to give us a rundown of the April Arts events, our friend Colney Smith from the Creative City Project is here again. And you, have, you always come with a plethora of different things. So if you like art, yes. if you like festivals, you, yeah. you've got it all right there for us. And yeah. the things that we talk about here just the tip of the iceberg. There's always so much going yes. on all across Central Florida. Mm -hmm. I'm super excited about what's going on at the yes. Rep this weekend, yeah. which I love the Rep. So tell us about Susical. Well, this past weekend they opened Susical the musical. It's a fun tale of the world of Dr. Seuss with the cat in the hat and Horton Elephant and the Who's. Mm -hmm. So it's all the famous stories that come together in a fun musical for the whole family. And it opened last weekend, and it runs this weekend through May 12th. So there's actually okay. opportunity for yeah. people to get to see that. Yeah. Now, if you have
have little ones and you have not been to the rep, you really are missing out. I mean, we love the rep and the prices are affordable and they have great summer camps. So I just yeah. can't say and how much I love the rep. it's time to rep. start thinking about those summer oh camps, right? Oh my gosh, right? it is past time to start thinking about They're them. I'm behind. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they do such a great job for families. They have some really wonderful programming for people to go see. But as you're saying, if you're little ones are passionate about the arts or even have an inkling about it, mm -hmm. it's a great place for them to discover if it's something they want to pursue. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's great. We love yeah. it. And now we also have Wonderland. I'm a big fan of the ballet, so what is that all about? Well, as you know, the ballet always does amazing work. I, if people have never been, they probably don't know how mm -hmm. amazing the sets are, oh. how wonderful the choreography is, how great the productions are. And their performances are at the Dr. Phillips Center, which is an amazing yeah. environment to see that work as well. Mm -hmm. So Look even this little that. spot right here that we're looking at, you yeah. can, they just set this set up for this commercial that they shot. So but wow, these are awesome. performers from the ballet. This is some of the set pieces and it really is, they do amazing work. So this is the story of Alice in Wonderland wow, through the perspective of the Mad Hatter. And that's Arcadian Broad. Uh -huh. uh, their artist in residence has been part of the ballet for a long time. And you can see it's affordable too, tickets starting at 19 bucks. So he wrote the music for this, he did the choreography for it. And this is actually his last production with the ballet. He'll be moving on after this season. Well, so sad. it's a swan song for him, as they say. Yeah, and tickets starting at $19. Even something that you're kind of on mm -hmm. the fence about and you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to like this. $19, you could really discover something you love. Yeah, and it's a good show, again, for kids, but also really interesting for adults as well. So it's a story and a, and a show that's appropriate for the whole family, but something that is also geared toward engaging adults as well. Yeah. Are there certain times for, like certain shows for kids and things like that? You'd find that on their website. Uh, they can go to any. There are four shows this weekend. There's mm -hmm. Friday and Saturday evening shows, and then there's a Saturday and a Sunday matinee. Gotcha. So if you want to you know, not have to be up until <laughs> 10 or 11 at night with the kids, yeah, right. you can go to those matinee shows. And you know, speaking, <laughs> speaking of something for the adult, you know, when it comes to getting outdoors and enjoying some good mm -hmm. food and wine, there's something coming up in Cocoa Beach. Yeah, they have an event called Uncorked. Features chefs from across Florida. Uh, breweries, restaurants. It's one of those fun, high class, you know, afternoon mm -hmm. uh, it, the events out on the beach, which will be really fun. It's at Allen Shepherd Park. And right there in Coco, mm -hmm. and so it'll be a nice weekend, hopefully, right, Candace? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, actually, it's going to be really nice. Yeah, so, sometimes crazy. they look at me, I'm like, oh, God, maybe not. But no, so this is a good weekend to do anything outside. Yeah, and so they'll have great food. You can see some of those pictures there. Yeah. Great drink. You can go get some, go get your wine on. Exactly, and everyone in those pictures looked really happy to be <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, so that right. shows us. it's a great yeah. And Melbourne also has their festival as right. well, so, so lots of stuff going the on. The 35th park. annual Melbourne Art Festival is also happening in Melbourne. 200 artists, lots of music, lots of food. So there's a lot happening in Brevard County this Packing weekend, too. it all into the end of April here. Yeah, right. It's, right. A, it's a famous weekend or week for a month, sorry, for the arts, for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, lots going on, so make those plans. Thank you, Cole. Yeah, of course. Here's a live look now from our beach cam. <laughs> Speaking of little, the beaches. Yeah, it's looking <laughs> a little bit hazy out there. Today's a bit of a transition day for mm -hmm. us. Yeah, and Candace, our hurricane season will be here soon enough, but a cyclone's making weather headlines. Oh, yes. We're still about a month away from our hurricane season. June 1st, but out in the French Indian Ocean, Cyclone Kenneth hit the island of Mayo. Now, we can see strong winds here knocking down some trees. They did cause some damage. More rain is expected today before the storm is expected to make landfall on Mozambique's coast. Now, that's where exactly just about a month ago, a very powerful storm hit there, killing hundreds of people. So it has really been a tough season, a, a tough uh, typhoon season for them. And again, our hurricane season starts June 1st. All right now, this is video of a tornado in Bryan, Texas. Lots of severe weather there in the Lone Star. Over the last few days, we had that crazy flooding video yesterday. Now, here is some video of the aftermath. You can see some buildings were pretty heavily damaged in this picture. You can see the roof here completely torn off. Now, the same storm system responsible for this tornado caused heavy rain and hail in other areas of Texas, as well as flooding that was blamed, unfortunately, for three deaths. The National Weather Service says these storms are now heading east, arriving along the Gulf Coast region throughout today and then parts of the East Coast on Friday.
i.e. better chance of rain for us on Friday. That is your weather around the world. Now let's pinpoint Central Florida a little closer to home. We're talking Oak Ridge and Port Orange. Good morning to both locations. We're at 89 degrees in Oak Ridge. It is going to be a toasty day. Mostly clear skies, still looking mostly dry. Rain is out of the picture. We do have kind of those milky skies for today, but it still will be heating us up fast. In Port Orange, it is a nice day if you want to head out to the beaches. 83 degrees will be our temperature along the coastline. Also looking mostly dry by 6 o'clock, though temperatures will start to cool down into the upper 70s. Now let's check on your personalized pinpoint weather forecast and we have the big Apopka Art and Foliage Festival. Again, a great weekend to go out and do some stuff. We will be personalizing some of those uh, forecasts uh, that uh, Cole was talking about for tomorrow. But for today, we're talking about the Foliage Festival it runs both Saturday and Sunday. I'm pinpointing your Saturday forecast. 83 will be our temperature. Your best chance of rain at only 10%. Really can't beat it this time of the year. Now, if you have a special event or day you'd like me to pinpoint for, send us your photos or videos along with your city, your date, your name, and why it's a special occasion, just head on over to clickorlando.com slash personalized pinpoint to submit them. Seven-day forecast, look at that weekend. Warm, but at least dry. 10% chance of rain on Saturday, nearing 90 degrees starting Sunday, and threat at least the middle part of the next work week. Our next best chance of rain will be tomorrow. As of now, models are showing more of the first half of the day, drying out later in the evening. So if you have some Friday night plans, you should be good to go. But of course, we'll have the next up date coming up at the, the 12 o'clock hour. It's sounding a little better. A little better. Yeah. 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 All right. The hit reality show Survivor. Ooh, the music. Looking for the next group of castaways. So a casting call is coming up Sunday at Victory Casino Cruises in Cape Canaveral. All the rules and all the forms are on clickorlando.com gets me in the mood with that survivor background. Yeah, yes. mm -hmm. Viral videos make us all laugh and they're here to make us smile and they're just really fun to share online too. And on Thursdays we like to share our favorite viral stories of the week. We found animals tend to help those videos go viral <laughs> yes. every time and uh, especially selfies oh, like this look one. Look at this. We'll explain how these gorillas were striking a pose in the viral video roundup just ahead. You're watching News 6, getting results for Ponce Inlet, St. Cloud, and all of Central Florida on air and on the News 6 mobile app. We'll be right back. Your personalized pinpoint weather is brought to you by J.A. Edwards of America, your roofing specialist. .com today. He calls himself a contractor, but buyer beware. Well, when it first happened, I was so upset. Like he was gonna, you know, go up above and beyond, you know, to help you out. Police say the same man has been arrested more than once for running off with thousands of dollars and never delivering on promises. We found out his history goes back more than a decade. And it's like, wow, this guy, I think we got taken here. I'm investigator Lewis Bold, and I'll tell you how to protect yourself and avoid being a victim. That's coming up at five. Thank you, Lewis. Well, cleaning up after cooking can be just a huge pain, mm. and you know what? So we love a one nice one skillet recipe. Yeah. Exactly. So tonight we are getting results for dinner with one skillet seared lamb and creamy red mm -hmm. wine penne. All that right. sounds really good. Yeah. The Mama Loves Food blog says that lamb sounds fancy, but it sounds like something you might get out to eat, but mm -hmm. it's actually really easy and tasty. It takes about 25 minutes. Get the full recipe on clickorlando.com under the food section. And yeah. Easy cleanup. That's win-win. Yeah. <laughs> well, we love this time of week looking at the best viral stories going on. Something to make you smile and get the day started off right. So ClickOrlando.com's Brianna Bowles is here now to show us what she's found. Well, we know this because a lot of our best stories come this way. So mm -hmm. an act of kindness can really go a long way. And this story is another great example. It all started when an officer pulled over a teen with an expired tag. He explained to me that um, he was on the way to a job interview. Um, at FedEx. Some came upon me, God, whatever it was, and said, give him a little break. So that's what I did. That's awesome. That's Officer Roger Jamalis. He's talking about this teen, Kayshawn Baldwin. Baldwin was just trying to get a job. Jamalis says, as a school resource officer, he works with kids every day, and he says he saw something of himself in Baldwin and decided to drive him to the interview. He says, Baldwin, getting that job was what makes him happiest. I love that story. Mm -hmm. And guys, if you want to go viral, here's a tip. Get some gorillas to stand up for you. Okay, no, just 
I'm kidding. Don't really try this. This is a park ranger in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, but he does know these gorillas well because he helped rescue them as wow. babies. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's why I don't recommend you try it at home, but you know, the gorillas were apparently copying human behavior, but it does make for a pretty cool photo. I mean, I think they nailed it. They are stunning. <laughs>